at Riverwise, we're growing our humanity. Shoot. <laughs> this freaking bug is driving me nuts. <laughs> ah! Did you get it? No. Oh. So, I think I always just end with... Um... <laughs> While I was pursuing a music education degree, started to get interested in ideas and philosophy and history and theology. Went off to seminary, ended up going beyond that to a graduate program in philosophy and eventually in rhetoric and communication studies. And anyhow, you know, 10, 12, 13 years later, came out with a PhD in rhetoric and philosophy of communication. I was trying to understand how the idea of hope embodied itself in the life of a community. And more particularly, I was trying to understand how hope embodies itself in the way we talk about our communities. So I was researching that, I was writing about that, I was teaching about it, and here I am studying community and community formation, and my, at the time, three kids, like, they didn't know their grandparents. It was like this really stupid juxtaposition between my professional identity and what was the kind of life I was building for myself. And so through a series of conversations and wrestling and, uh, you know, really soul searching, um, Pamela, my wife and I decided that we quit, uh, walked away from higher education, uh, three years into a tenure track position, but we felt strongly that we needed to, to do something different. So we moved back here to Western Pennsylvania, to Alacopa, where my wife grew up. We bought a house here, intentionally invested in a home and, uh, been a couple of years rebuilding it from the ground up. We wanted our children to be rooted in a place with a rich and deep identity and add history. I started, of all things, a community bookstore. The most counterintuitive business maneuver one could ever imagine. So I've never really been accused of being a super shrewd business person. A whole bunch of things cascaded out of that. A whole bunch of opportunities, you know, getting involved in all kinds of boards and conversations at the community level and becoming more and more invested in understanding at a community level, at a municipal level, at a county level, like how do we build a community and an identity and projects and organizations and collaborations. And so it just got progressively more and more involved in that kind of stuff. You know, eventually thought, well, hey, there's some things that we understand here. There's some things we certainly still have to learn, but what would it look like if we founded an organization to, to really build stronger, more intentional communities here in Beaver County. So all of that came together in the story of moving home, in the story of the bookstore, eventually in the story of Riverwise. You know, these were all targeted investments in a specific place. I had no idea what we were getting ourselves into, but I kind of like to jump before I understand everything, and, and we, we did a little bit of that. That's sort of where Riverwise emerged. I think I get most excited when there's something that's like right on the cusp of possible, and I or Riverwise or some combination of the, the two are able to step along that thing that's almost possible and like get it to become real. And when things start to exist that didn't exist beforehand, but then persist way beyond the life cycle of, of anything that we're a part of, that's making culture, that's creating identity, you know, that's extending one's social and relational and intellectual capital into a whole nother set of activities. And that's what healthy communities do. I'm inclined to say that much of what I have learned stems from failure, getting things wrong. I've learned that I'm pretty good at starting things, but that I need to surround myself with a team of people that are different from me to take those things to the next level and ultimately to the finish line. You know, I'm an idea guy. I wrangle chaos into some sort of meaningful form, but then I also make a bunch of chaos for other people along the way. I've learned that I move too quickly, uh, often for, for a team. I've learned that lots of things exist in my head that don't come out of my mouth. I've learned that Others are not nearly as comfortable with uh, uncertainty as, as I might be. And figuring out how to honor all that on the one hand, because we need leaders who can do and be all of those things, but also to temper that with a team that is importantly different and complementary to me. You know, I'm at a stage right now where more than ever, I, I feel like I'm not sure what we're doing, what I'm doing. I feel like I'm on the cusp of my expertise. 
Um, and I think a, a growing, learning, healthy, adaptive organization ought to be at that place maybe more often than not. I'm learning to sort of balance that discomfort of uncertainty and of not feeling like I have all of the answers and not feeling like I always know exactly what to do next. That's where leadership, I think, grows and extends itself. And I'm learning those lessons more and more, I think, with every passing month. If we're not building work for one another that is dignified and that is meaningful, I don't want to be a part of any of that. And I think way more often than not, we get that piece right. And if we continue to get that piece right, we will build better, fuller, richer, more vibrant communities for future generations of Beaver County to inhabit. You know, I'm pushing 50 years old at this point. You know, I have four children. Like at some point you start asking yourself, what am I leaving? to the next generation? What am I leaving to my children? What am I leaving to my grandchildren? Starting to think about the word legacy. And we have an opportunity here in our backyard, in our front yard, in our communities, in our schools, in our businesses, in our places of worship. We have an opportunity to build something really, really beautiful. And I want to do that for my children, for their children. My hope really is that when my time with Riverwise is done, that there will be a, a pile of leaders behind whatever I've been involved with, that there'll be a pile of projects that have turned themselves into cultural institutions that persist behind whatever I've happened to be a part of, that that somehow follows something that I have you know, put into the universe. If I didn't have that sort of impulse behind our work, man, it'd be awfully hard to get out of bed in the morning and continuing to do the kind of stuff that, that we're working on. But with that focus in mind, if we really truly understand that we're architecting communities for future generations, and that's a, a deep and, and wide well of motivation um, and a place of, of profound enjoyment.